Hi everyone, today we will talk about the length of a curve. When we have a curve, the way we define its length is very similar to how the Riemann integral of a function is defined. Each partition of the domain of a curve gives us a finite number of points in the curve, which in turn give us a broken line inscribed in our curve. As the partition becomes finer and finer, these broken lines approximate the curve more and more. We define the length of the curve as the limit of the lengths of these broken lines, or equivalently, the supremum of the lengths of such broken lines with respect to all partitions. We will proceed by studying the basic properties of this definition. The broken line corresponding to the trivial partition is simply a straight line from the initial point of the curve to its final point. By definition, this implies that the length of any curve is at least as long as the distance between its endpoints, with equality only when the curve is a straight line. Now consider two equivalent parametrizations of the same curve. Given any partition of the domain of gamma 1, the change of variables phi gives us a partition of the domain of gamma 2 with the same associated broken line. In a similar fashion, for any partition of the domain of gamma 2, one can find the partition of the domain of gamma 1 with the same associated broken line, by taking the lengths of these broken lines and taking the supremum among all partitions, one concludes that the length of a curve does not depend on the parametrization. Another basic property is obtained when we look at the concatenation of two curves, just like we expect, the length of a concatenation gamma 1 asterisk gamma 2 equals to the sum of the lengths of gamma 1 and gamma 2. The next property has to do with isometries. If t is an isometry, that is, a transformation of the plane that respects distances, then applying it to a curve does not change its length. This is again because one partition of our original curve gives us a partition of the transformed curve with the same length and vice versa. The fifth property that we will discuss is probably the only one that is not obvious. Imagine that we have a curve gamma and a sequence of curves with the same domain, gamma 1, gamma 2, and so on, that converges pointwise to gamma. Then the length of gamma is at most the limb of the lengths of the curves of the sequence. In order to prove this, one needs to consider an arbitrary partition of gamma and show that the limb on the right is not smaller than the length of the corresponding broken line. This happens to be very easy. Since all of the curves have the same domain, a partition of gamma yields a partition of gamma 1, a partition of gamma 2, and so on, and these partitions give broken lines inscribed in the sequence of curves that converge to the broken line inscribed in the curve gamma. So the lengths of the elements of the sequence are at least as large as the lengths of these broken lines giving the result. Now I have to warn you about some monsters that we may run into in the future. This is the Koch snowflake, obtained by starting with a straight line, replacing the middle third with an equilateral triangle, then for all the line segments obtained, we replace the middle third by an equilateral triangle, and we do it again and again and again. After doing it infinitely many times, we get a compact curve with infinite length. Most of the examples that we are going to deal with are going to have finite length, but it is healthy to be aware that these kinds of curves exist. Let's recall all the properties we have so far. The length of a curve is at least the distance between its endpoints, with equality only if the curve is a line. The length of a curve is invariant under reparametrizations. The length of a concatenation is the sum of the lengths. The length is invariant under isometries of the plane. And if we have a sequence of curves that converges pointwise to another curve, the length of the limit curve will be at most the limit of the lengths of the curves of the sequence. It turns out that any other property will follow from these five. This is because of the length is the only functional satisfying these properties. In other words, we have this theorem. If we have some functional lambda that assigns a number to each curve and it satisfies these same five properties, then it has to be the length. To prove this theorem, all we need to show is that for any curve gamma, lambda of gamma equals the length of gamma. By the first property, this equality holds for lines. By the concatenation property, since it holds for lines, 
Equality also holds for broken lines. As we mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, any curve can be approximated by broken lines whose lengths approximate the length of gamma. So by the limit property, for any curve gamma, lambda of gamma is at most the limit of the lambdas of such broken lines, which are in turn the lengths of these broken lines that converge to the length of gamma. This implies that lambda of gamma is less or equal to the length of gamma. Before we prove the other inequality, we must notice that by the concatenation property and by the isometry invariance property, we are allowed to shatter the curve into pieces, rearrange them as we want, and the value of lambda will not change. With this property, for any partition of the curve, we can break it into finitely many pieces and reassemble it along a straight line. By doing this with finer and finer partitions, one obtains a sequence of curves alpha i with the same lambda value as the original one, but converging pointwise to a straight segment L whose length equals the length of the original curve. Then by the limit property, lambda of gamma is at least its length. This finishes the proof of the theorem. Let's finish this lesson with the concepts of length function and arc length parametrization. When we have a curve gamma with domain AB, we always have its length function L. The length function is a real function with the same domain as the curve, and for each time t, L of t is defined as the length of gamma restricted to the interval AT. Physically, this means how much has the particle traveled since the initial time until time t. By this interpretation, it should be clear that the length function evaluated at the initial time is zero since the particle hasn't traveled at all, and evaluated at the final time is the total length of the curve by definition. Since this function is monotone, one could build the inverse function, and something very interesting happens when we compose this inverse function with gamma. We get a curve alpha with a very special property that sends its domain to the plane without shrinking or stretching. In other words, for each subinterval st in its domain, the length of alpha restricted to such interval is precisely the length of the interval t minus s. This function alpha is going to be called the arc length parametrization of the curve gamma.